Harmless? Zip it will show the fat brutes harmless. You see these bones, yes? They were two adventurers who starved to death because Zip it kept the magic walls up for a hundred years. Brittle bone artifact filled with the hex power they need to create the tooth once used by brittle bones to cut up potatoes. Hello and welcome to Spell Force 3 Fallen God. This is a standalone expansion for Spell Force 3 and this video is kindly sponsored by THQ Nordic. If you would like to check out the game, there is a link in the description and it comes out on November 3rd. And you know, if you want to jump in right now to Spell Force 3, at least the multiplayer, THQ has a surprise for you. You can start playing the multiplayer only beta right now until November 1st. There is going to be a free version of the multiplayer available that, where you can play as a randomly chosen faction against others and there's also a co-op mode as well. Not entirely sure if that comes with the multiplayer version of the game. I think it does but otherwise uh, there's a whole bunch of content here. There's a huge amount. It is crazy and the story is actually fantastic too. There's a huge amount of dialogue choices and all kinds of crazy stuff. And here's the thing. The story focuses on a clan of trolls and their battle for survival. And there is a huge amount of playtime in the campaign itself. And then obviously you have single player modes, you've got co-op modes, you've got multiplayer, PvP, ranked skirmishes against AI as well, if you want to. And if you're not familiar with Spell Force 3, it is an RTS RPG hybrid. So we're just going to be continuing with Fallen God here and playing on normal. When fate decides a troll must bow, Chieftain Narjak Firstborn told his cub, Agrog must carry the tribe now. Narjak. Narjak has spoken. Slowly, Akrog looked up from the bloody mud. Akrog cannot. He is not ready. Narjak's gaze was like fog. Take care of them, cub. Them and him. Both. All right, so we're through to the character creation. Now, character creation, obviously, because this is an RPG as well as an RTS, is very important. And technically, you can create any kind of class you want. There are a huge amount of different ability sets here, and these all have different attributes associated with them. We're not going to spend too much time on this because I'm going to just give you a brief overview of it. I'd like to get into the story, I'd like to get into the gameplay a little bit, but Basically, you could choose the way of crushing things, the gift of blood, which is more about spell power and casting magic, way of hurling things, which is about throwing stuff at people, and then also you have a number of other pieces of magic as well, so you can use different things, like for example this, Magua gives him the gift of nature, connecting him to the dirt below and the plants around him. In battle, he can turn the dirt into sticky mud, split the ground in two, and even make the ground spit flaming rocks at his enemies. He can use the healing power of plants, or turn them against his enemies too. So there's a huge amount of different uh, different things to, to go for here. You can basically make any kind of character you want. You can also have a wide variety of different customization too. So if I just randomize real quick, you can literally see how much it changes, hairstyle, scars, accessories, haircut, etc, etc. So it's really very cool. And you also have different classes as well. So for example, if I wanted to play as a stopper, that's basically a tanking kind of character. And you can see here that it automatically gives me a number of attribute points. And uh, you can see that each of these attributes have something different uh, associated with them. So, for example, if you wanted to level up Dexterity, then Dexterity is going to be very good for, as you can see, Javelins, Dexterity-based two-handed weapons, and so on. So it's very much good for a throwing weapon guy. But unfortunately, this guy's definitely not going to be playing as that. There are a number of other uh, archetypes as well. Hunter, Flame Master, Gloom Touched, Cub of Earth, Blood Giver, and Hurler 
and Slayer. So, uh, yes, we're going to be playing as a Stopper. I think Stopper is pretty good for Mr. Akrog here. I think that's probably going to be the best possible thing we can do. You can also hide and uh, hide their equipment as well, so you can see a little bit more about what their customization is all about. And, uh, yeah, I think we're going to be playing with a Stopper here, and we'll play with the way of crushing things, I guess. Yeah, that seems pretty good to me, so let's move on to the next one, Grungwa. So Grungwa is, um, in my opinion pretty i think he's pretty good i was going to randomize a little bit here there we go and we're just going to mm, i'm not entirely sure what he's good at but as far as i'm aware he's quite mm, potentially shamanistic so i'm thinking we'll make him into some kind of caster potentially obviously you can decide whatever you want to do he uses his hex stick to control gloom powers that sounds pretty fun or cub of earth that's more of a healing kind of thing he gives his blood to strike harder and weaken enemies yeah i think i'm going to go for the gloom touched that sounds pretty fun to me so we'll go with that you can see here all the attributes are selected automatically but of course as i said before you can create any kind of custom character you want now this is a guy that where you can't actually pick his ability tree because here's the thing Akrog's behavior around him will later change the shape of Noag's unique secondary tree depending on his outlook. This very much depends on story. As I said in the beginning of the episode, this game has numerous conversation options and dialogue choices that you're going to be able to make and as a result it will shape how people see you and how the story progresses so yes otherwise we're just going to be able to assign his attribute points attributes have an effect on a character's strength obviously so we're just going to be um, increasing his stats relatively normally right here we're not going to be doing too much um, too much in the way of willpower because it does it actually increases your magical resistance but he's not really going to be that much of a caster or anything like that so I think we're going to be pretty fine with him just basically doing that and that's a story based character that potentially joins your party after a certain period of time early in the game otherwise we're just going to randomize Mr. Zaska right here and as far as I am aware I think I'm going to make him into a hurler so he's basically going to be throwing stuff at the opponent as much as he possibly can, so I'm pretty happy with this too. Shield the tribe, and shield Noag. Those were Chieftain Narjak's last words to his cub Akrog after a ballista bolt from the Tusk Hunters pierced right through his chest. Fabled warrior, leader of the Moon Controls, last of the mythical firstborn, killed by elven poachers. It was not only Narjak's heart the bolt impaled that day, but also that of the Moonkin tribe, weakened by the terrible blood rot plague and decimated by the hunters. They had long been struggling for survival. With their mighty chieftain gone, the last ray of hope still shining was Noak, Akrog's younger sibling who had inherited Narjak's legendary power. The chieftain's wish for Akrog to succeed him surprised many kin, but it surprised Akrog most of all. True, he was a strong and honorable warrior, but far from the Moonkin's best. All he had was the peculiar gift to hear the voices of the dead and an iron will to do right by his sire's last words. Was he ready for this? He could not say. Yet when the tribe demands, a troll must bow. And so Akrog found himself giving his first command as a chieftain to be. The Moonkin would travel to Mugwa's Cradle, a shrine guarded by the Bonekin trolls, to perform the Devouring, the sacred ritual where the new chieftain consumed the old chieftain's heart to take up his role. This story begins the day the bruised tribe arrived at the cradle, where Akrog, joined by his mentor Grunoir and his trusted one Saska, ventured out to find a holy plant for the ritual, Mugwar's Tear. Little did Akrog know that the true trial of the Moonkin trolls had just begun. No matter what the trolls may think of Chieftain Akrog, 
trust not the foul tusks who say he had everything given to him on a moon silver platter. All because his sire was chieftain before him. Oh no, little cubs. The hunger, the blood rot, the hunters. The moonkin had become but a shadow, and in the span of a day, it became Akrog's calling to lead them back to Mugwa's light. The day he and his two companions went out to prepare Narjak's last rites would be but the beginning of his troubles. and hard to reach places. It was a rotten pain to get here. <sighs> One blew Magrog to embalm the chieftain's corpse for the devouring. Harm not the others. And here is one of the first dialogue choices. Now, technically, it's not much of a choice, but it does provide you with a whole bunch of backstory. So you can basically ask some questions here and you can find out more about the world itself. It gives you a whole bunch of world building and lore and everything that you potentially want to know about these trolls and their clan. Anyway, why can Akrog not pluck more? We could ask that. Akrog remembers the brittle bones use the blooms too. If the blooms are so powerful, perhaps they could help with the blood rot which is obviously the plague that has completely ravaged their clan as well i'm gonna ask why can akrog not pluck more akrog wants not to disrespect mugwa but why can they not pluck more this is a brittle bone ruin if the moonkin pluck them not someone else will akrog speaks true but still the laws demand it these blooms are gifts from mugwa to the sacred earth and the only time a troll can rip them from the soil is for the rights. Akrog understands. All right, so I guess I'm going to pluck the bloom then. All right, and it is done. The bloom has been plucked. Back to the cradle then. Before the big little oaf Noag goes mad with worry, thinking they tumbled off a cliff. Hmm, we can, uh, well, I think, I think we should probably just say let them march back. Let them march back. They have lost too much time already. Wait, before they leave, Grangwa, well, Grangwa has an unusual wish. He would like to pluck a bloom for himself. What for? The devouring? No, it is... <sighs> oh, the Moonkin have been running for so long, Chieftain. Grangwa dreams that one day they will find a true home somewhere. A tribe camp to last, so to speak. Ooh, I see a little bit of, uh, <laughs> a little bit of double standards right here from Grongwa. Right, so he gave me a whole speech about how I should not pick another one, and now all of a sudden he's like, oh yes, but now I must pick another one for myself. Yes, okay, so we have a number of options here, but I think we could, I think I'm basically going to let him pick it, because I personally feel like his dream is actually quite noble, and if he can make it happen, then I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, because it might very well ensure the everlasting survival of our clan, potentially, who knows, but I'm going to allow him to pick it. Fine. Grungwa can pick it. Grungwa thanks the chieftain. He... <sighs> there, old fur. His precious little bloom. Zoska should not have done that. The blooms are sacred. Well, Zaska just did, and he still stands here, looking as good as ever. Now, how about they leave this place? <laughs> Fine. Back to the cradle, then. What can he 
All right, so that's actually something else that I wanted to mention too. The story of Spellforce 3 Fallen God is completely different from the other Spellforce 3 games. So you don't actually need to be familiar with those to be able to understand exactly what's going on here, which I think is very cool. And also, in the multiplayer, you can play as six different factions and i've played a little bit of the multiplayer a little bit of the skirmish mode shall we say and uh, I, I was having a lot of fun in that actually so maybe i can show you some of that in a later episode potentially we'll see we'll see but otherwise i don't know whether you've noticed but there's these little uh, little icons here on the portraits of our characters and that basically means that you can increase their abilities and as a result we have a number of different things here that we will be able to select so this is going to be kind of interesting because i um i haven't picked these classes before so this is going to be quite fun uh let's see what we want to go for he causes more pain when he attacks enemies uh, or we could go for this. Akrog leads the way when he is not fighting. Akrog and his nearby kin move more quickly. That actually sounds pretty good. So let's go for something like that. And uh, as you go on, you're going to be able to unlock further, more powerful abilities that will use focus points. Because you can see here that Akrog actually has only 21 focus points, which are extremely, that's extremely limited, basically. But what is this? Ooh, I like that. All right, we're going to take that as well. And as you can see down here, uh, basically what is what is going to happen with this, trigger spell with every attack, apply Chieftain's Mark. So it's basically a passive. And what will happen is whenever he hits something, it is going to enable additional damage done to that particular enemy. Okay, Magua blesses this old warrior when he uses a weapon, it inflicts Hex Pain. Yep, sounds good. He's already using that. And what else do we have here? Uh, three more focus, life totem, the totem slowly heals Grongwa's nearby kin. Ah, perfect. Yes, I like that quite a bit. That's exactly the reason why I wanted to actually uh, take a uh, somewhat shamanistic character so we can have those effects helping us out quite a bit. And also we have this as well, which is also a passive. It has a 7% chance to trigger this with every attack to apply a silence for four seconds, which in my opinion is very powerful. And then obviously we have Zaska here, who is our hurling weapons specialist. And uh, he has a better chance of causing lots of pain. 3% critical hit chance. Yes, I will indeed take that. Thank you. And when he is fighting, he moves more quickly. Yes, sounds good. And then the last one will probably be... Probably something like this. This is going to be a usable, I think. Yeah, that's a usable, so that will go down here. You can use all of these abilities, by the way, by either holding Alt and then selecting it over an enemy. So if you have an enemy right here, let's say this guy's an enemy, then you can hold Alt and then you can literally use it on them by just doing that. The game also has controller support, by the way, so... If you want to use a controller, then you indeed can. It does play best with a keyboard and mouse, of course, because RTS, you know, it is well known that that's the case, but they did add controller support. And otherwise, you can use the F keys if you so desire to use these abilities instead. Now, let's just open up the lever and go through the gate. Strange. Maybe Zarama could learn a thing or two from these ruins. Brittle bone craftsmanship never brings anything good. It is like the other one, but the stick is missing. Let them look around then. Maybe they can mend it somehow. That should work. Let Akrog see. This looks easy. So, you may have noticed on the right side of the screen, just above all of our keybinds on the right there, basically telling us how we can attack and stop and do all kinds of other actions, there are a number of things above here, and these are all resources that you're going to be dealing with pretty much all the time in the game. Obviously, you're going to need a lot of them to be able to construct structures, buildings, and also create units, but obviously we're not there yet. What is needed of yet?
What on Urgath is this? He is going. Let Grum. The Moonkin cannot go through here. True. But there is a Hexstone. If they can kindle the... There they are. Trusted one, Herbak one eye. What is he doing here? Looking for them. The fat bone can chieftain was getting worried. The tears were harder to find than they thought. Mm-hmm. Cub Akrog? Nurbak will tell him one more time. The moon can ship break off the devouring and move on. If they stay in this clearing for too long, the hunters will come for them. Nurbak, they talked about this. The Chieftain must be devoured, so Magwa can pass on his power to the Chosen Chieftain. Narjok would want... What Narjok would want is for the tribe to survive. But Nurbok has said his peace. It is clear the tribe would rather listen to a fresh tusk cobbling who hears voices in the wind. Ooh, now we have three different choices right here. Okay, is Nurbok done? Nurbok will not disrespect Akrog, or Sire Narjak was the last firstborn. He deserves to leave this world with honor. I think I'm actually going to be selecting that one. Sire Narjak was the last firstborn of the trolls and the greatest chieftain there ever was. He deserves to leave this world with honor. Zazka could not agree more. If everyone got what they deserved, every worker would have their own iron beak. Make no mistake, Nurbok treasured Narjak like he treasures Grunglar. But Narjak was a great chieftain because he put others first. Surely Akrog knows that, after what his sire did for Nurbok and Akrog both. Akrog knows, Nurbok. But what honor have the trolls left if they let these rotten brittle bones crush even their most sacred traditions? Now. Can Nerbok kindle the Hexstone? He can. Oh, and Zaska Small Tusk? What? Nerbok knows the Small Tusk has been scheming. He will keep an eye on him. Then how will he see where he is going? What was Nerbok talking about? About Zaska scheming? Scheming makes it sound very bad. He will tell Trusted One Akrog after the devouring. Kin should not have secrets from each other, Zaska. And Grungwar would know all about that, no? Ooh, a lot of intrigue going on already. Okay, let's uh, let's interact with this. Okay, so basically, these are godstones. In the multiplayer version of the game, the godstones are used to summon heroes and to indeed resurrect them as well. They can also be used for teleportation. In the campaign mode, well, teleportation is indeed a thing. So we can link these two godstones together as you can see and then they create portals and then you can take all your guys through them and well you see exactly what happened what is this what is agrog waiting for they need to bring the tears to the bonekin that bear nurbok crushed it nurbok crushed it but it was already hurt when he came here maybe a bonekin hunter killed it then or a brittle bone. Anuk's eyes have scouted the jungle. They say there is no one in sight, neither brittle bone nor green skin. True. Well, it will be a good meal for the ill and wounded. Nurbok will take it back to the tribe. A wise idea. Best ask Krum who needs it most. Why would Nurbok accuse Zazka of scheming? Ask him himself. The small tusk is standing right there. And he was about to say the same thing. Akrog, Zaska will tell him after the devouring. Now is not the time. <sighs> Fine. Akrog will leave now. Will Nurbok join the devouring? He will. But there is something else he has to look into first. Hmm. Sharp tusks and thick hide, then. 
Ooh, I would love to know what Zaska is up to, actually. I really want to find that out. Anyway, there's more resources that we can pick up here. Bear in mind that resources, as I said before, are required for constructing buildings. And indeed, you're going to be able to get workers and housing and all that stuff to try and increase your supply limit and also to build warriors. Something about this jungle always makes Akrog's hide crawl. The blood drop in the cradle. It is full of Magua's power, making life and plants flourish all around it. Pity all that power does beak shit to keep the hunters and slavers away. Is something wrong, Zaska? No, of course not. By the Holy Hide, if it is not Chosen Chieftain Akrog Bone Crusher. Cabrax was about to ask the Bones if something happened to them. Chieftain Cabrax, Magua prays. It is true, finding the tears was harder than they thought. The Brittlebone Ruin was swarming with bugs. Good for the tears? Bad for the many Brittlebone treasure hunters who search them. Ha! Come, show him. Ah, good. Very good. Mugwa will be pleased. Now all they need is a tooth. A sacred pier stick. The Bonekin have none of their own. Oh, of course they do. But the Moonkin will need to shape their own for their sacrifice. How can they shape a tooth? Grungwar said it. It is a sacred weapon. Just like how the Moonkin shape their other weapons. All Akrog must do is find a hex to brittle bone weapon, scrap it, then have the Moonkin master scrapper use the parts to shape the tooth. Where can they find a hexed Brittlebone weapon, though? Oh, there are many places in this jungle. But Cabrax believes he heard the Moonkin's master scrapper, Zadamuk, speak of a Brittlebone hideout up north. His name is Zeramak. But good, Akrog will speak to him. Oh, and Chieftain Cabrax. Akrog is not Chieftain yet, but he still thanks Cabrax in the name of the tribe. He knows many Bonekin wanted not the Moonkin so close to their shrine, with the Hunters and the Bloodrot. Cabrax took a risk helping them, and Akrog will not forget it. Look at that! The cub has his sire's silver tongue. No, Akrog means it. Only the Bonekin can do the devouring. If not for Cabrax, Narjak would never find his way into the moonlit river, and Akrog could never be blessed with Narjak's strength. True, true. But Narjak was not only a great chieftain, but also the last firstborn troll. To give him his last rites is a great honor. And as for the fool tusks afraid of catching the blood rot, what they need most is a fat fist to the face. They should know the rot cannot be passed from one troll to another, and be glad the bone kin were mostly spared. Now off with Akrog. That tooth will not shape itself. So be it. Sharp tusks and thick hide, Chieftain Cabrax. Ooh, good to know, good to know. All right, let's move on to the tribe camp. So the Master Scrapper guy is going to be your main craftsman NPC, and you're going to be able to speak to him to be able to craft a variety of different items. That includes equipment as well. As far as I am aware, you will be able to equip your units, as you can see here, with a variety of different things. You have two ring slots, you have two weapon slots, you have a necklace, a helm, and obviously armor of some kind and then i'm not entirely sure what this is but we're gonna obviously find that out later on oh chieftain back good good what he need the moon can need to craft a tooth can zeramak help with that uh tooth for eating <laughs> no the holy weapon for the devouring 
They have the pointy end, they just need a brittle bone pier stick with hex power. Caprax said the scrappers found a brittle bone hideout up north. Ah, the cave, true. It locked, but the scrappers find shiny metal to open it. Here, uh, how it called? A key. The scrappers went in already. Not yet, because there are Eric's and other creatures. But Chieftain and Grung were strong. They can squish them. Maybe they take little Moonblood too? He's so strong. Maybe. Speaking of little blood, has Zeramax seen him? Hmm, bit to go he have, but not now. Maybe he sleep in shelter? Akrog will look. Either way, they will be back with the brittle bone pier stick. Zeramax should stay ready. He will. Oh, and Slig? Best ask now. All right, so as you can see right here, a quest has been completed and you can get a variety of different rewards. You can even choose out of a number of them, but for this particular quest, we're getting all of this. We're getting a rusty key, we're getting some blades, plates, shaping essence, all that stuff. And if you speak to this guy again, you can actually go and say, uh, I need you to shape something. So then he's going to be like, oh, okay, here you go. And then he has all these recipes that you're going to be able to create with the resources that you have at your disposal. You see here you have plates, blades, shaping essence, hex essence, and strong hex essence. This is used to create legendary items of immense power. I would love to be able to do that. Obviously, we do also have the ability to create life force potions, hex power potions, as well as potion of fresh start. I actually don't know what that is. Oh, it's a reset. Oh, okay, cool. cool. Okay, you can actually respec with that. And uh, you, you only need uh, 10, uh, 10 shaping essence to get that. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. But yes, there are healing potions, of course, as well in the game. So you can uh, p potentially you know, use that to try and restore your forces a little bit. And we have indeed leveled up once again. So let's see what I should spec into. I am not entirely sure. Uh, we can't actually spec into anything here because we need party level 3 for these. So I suppose we will go for something like this. Uh, this one. There we go. Moonkin Might. He causes more pain when he attacks enemies. Sounds good to me. And we're also going to be increasing his constitution a little bit because I'd like to make it so that he can wear the heaviest armor possible. And applies immune to purge. Ooh. His wisdom helps him ignore enemies when they try to remove his blessings. That sounds super fun. We might want to go for that or apply enfeebled for five seconds. That actually sounds more fun than the other one. So we'll take that and then we will increase his willpower a little bit because that is indeed what you want to take as a caster. And then otherwise, what else should we take? We've already got deadly throw. We probably want to take something. Oh, there's a healing paste right here. That actually sounds pretty good. So we'll probably take dead treasure so basically what this can do is he can harvest corpses to collect ingredients if his capacity allows which is pretty cool and um he can then use healing paste next time takes care of his tribe he can mash a paste to heal himself or his kin which is actually very cool because so if the caster has condition carrying ingredients from the corpses that he's scavenged of course and the target is living heal allied creature by 19 percent which is actually quite fantastic. Now, Zaska is a thrown weapon guy, so I might want to go for more dexterity. Is that not what I want to do? Maybe not, because it might be a strength-based weapon. Let me actually just take a quick look at his... No, it is a throwing... Spe no, scaling attribute is dexterity, so I should probably spec into a little bit of extra dexterity right here. Sounds pretty good to me. We also have a two-handed axe here, but I'm not going to be using that with anyone because I don't believe it's going to be that beneficial for us right now. Okay, so we're done. Thank you very much. I will now be moving on, and we can also speak to a number of other people that will give us optional quests. Well, technically these are side quests that will allow us to increase our power. There's one here specifically. Scrapper Slig Stoutheart. You wanted to speak with Akrog? It is true, Chosen Chieftain. Slig knows this is a strange time to be asking him for a favor, but Chosen Chieftain Akrog has always been happy to help the Scrappers before. He has, it is true. And what sort of help is needed this time? Oh, the usual. Slick needs to bring back as much scrap as he can, so that he and the Master Scrapper can keep up with the need for weapons, armor, and all that stuff. He needs Akrog to carry scrap? 
No, no. Just shield Slig while he finds what they need. He gets so carried away with Sorton that he would not even hear Mugwa's cub if it came sneaking up behind him. There is a crumbling Brittlebone place southeast of here, where Slig might find some lovely scrap. Chosen Chieftain knows where Slig means. Hmm. He knows. He was there not so long ago, looking for Mugwa's tears. Perfect. So, has the Chosen Chieftain time to help Slick just like in the good old days? He has not really the time, but he cannot say no to Slick. What is his plan? Oh, Mogwar prays. The Chosen Chieftain is so kind. Slick will meet Chosen Chieftain Akrog outside the Brittle Bone Ruins. It will not take Slick long to find out what he needs. Hopefully. It had better not. Akrog will meet Slick there. All right. He will see him soon. Ooh, so he's going to go off. All right. So he's going to go off and then we will indeed meet him over there. What is this? Oh, I should probably loot this, whatever it may be. Ah, plus five stone. Okay, that's going to be quite useful. All right, so he's gone down here. So he's going to be waiting uh, waiting for us down there. And by the way, this is not just the... This is not the only map that you're going to be experiencing. There are a number of different areas that you'll be able to do and indeed enter. So let me actually just show you that real fast because, well, there's another godstone right here. That's pretty cool. But let me see. Hmm. Here, for example, this is pretty much perfect so basically what we can do is we can go in here open this up using the rusty key and then we can go in as you can see so it's not just this one map there are a huge amount of instanced maps as well stick with hex power gabrak said let them find it and keep their crush sticks ready zeramak said there were beasts all right, so we might want to be a bit careful here because this is, in my opinion, going to be quite difficult. So we'll see how that goes. I do need to be a bit careful about using my abilities as well because generally I am not very... I'm not very proficient at using abilities like these. So we're going to see if I can maybe do quite well. Uh, there's a godstone here. Bear in mind that we do have four revives as well. These are the revival charges in multiplayer. This is unlimited, of course, but in a campaign, it is not going to be. So there's that. Anyway, let's be a bit careful here. Okay, so the, there are bugs. And uh, where's Akrog? There's Akrog. Okay, so he's going to be going first. Thank you very much, because he's going to be the hardest to kill. is ready. He might be old. But his are still sharp. There we go. Just going to put the little totem out there so that Akrog can gain some healing. As you can see, he's actually gaining healing right now, which is really nice. And I don't think I really need to worry about too much else. Hopefully the totem is not going to get killed. It is actually getting killed right now, which is not very nice. But hopefully we're going to do okay. If I do need to move away, then that's all like I, I, I can do that pretty easily, actually. And it seems like my strategy seems to have worked quite nicely so far, and we've eliminated all of the bugs without too many difficulties. I'm a bit worried about what else is going to be in this cave, to be honest, because as you can no doubt tell, the bugs... They're pretty tricky. They're actually pretty tricky. They're not pushovers by any means. Now, let me actually see. Can I use this? Yep, there we go. Treasure. There we go. Okay, so I collected some treasure right there. Yeah, so you gain one charge per time you do that, I think. And that seems to be good. I don't know whether... I haven't really used it that much. But it's always going to be nice to have an additional way to heal people. So that's basically what I was going for right there. Oh, no. Come on, Akrog. Get out there. No, no, you want, him, you want him to be tanking, thank you. There we are. Now we can just throw our little spear at these enemies as well. And we want to get Grungwa out of there as well. We really do not want anyone else but Akrog tanking. That's the thing, you've got to be a little bit microing here as well. You've got to make sure that you don't take too much damage with the characters that are somewhat fragile. There we go. All right. Ah, there's a chest there as well. And we might want to explore the cave a little bit further too. In that direction. 
Ah, there's another god star. Oh, hello, hello. All right, yeah, so let's see here. Okay, so Mr. Akrog, you go over here and attack these, and then, then these two will go over here. Should really bind these to different keys, to be honest. I feel like that would probably be a good idea. As you can see down at the bottom here, you have a number of different key binds that you're going to be able to save with your units. Obviously, in good good old RTS fashion, you're, you're going to be able to do that with holding down control and then pressing a number key. And at the moment, I have one to select all of them, which I think is probably a bit of a mistake. I think I should probably put them on five or something like that. So they're all going to be on five. And then Akrog's going to be number one, Grungwa's number two, and then Zazker is number three. So that's going to be a lot easier for me to handle because then I will be able to order them around individually and I'll be able to save them much more accurately. But anyway, let's just continue to move around here. Ah, oh, there's uh, some more bugs. Perfectly happy with this. We do have a, uh, a healing potion, well, shall we say healing totem that I can potentially use here. Gonna use that because it seems like Akrog is taking a massive amount of damage for some reason. And I probably should have specced him into something that would have provided him a little bit more AOE potential, shall we say. But hopefully they're going to be gaining a level relatively soon. As you can see, their experience is almost... Um, oh, actually, it's not. <laughs> they're quite far away from leveling up, actually. <laughs> Scratch that. Okay, did not realize. Okay, so now I can actually heal myself, can I? Yeah, I think I can. Oh, I can't heal him. He can't heal himself, but he can heal allies, I think. That seems to be the case. Yeah, that seems to be the case. So, okay, well, that's perfectly fine. As you can see, we're doing absolutely greatly. And we do have a good amount of passive regeneration as well. So even if I didn't want to heal right now, it actually wouldn't make too much difference. And there seems to be something else down here too. Seems to be the exit potentially. Yeah, seems to be the, the exit over there, but that is also perfectly fine. So we can just head back to the chest. What is in there? This looks interesting. So many shiny things. Grumwar has any idea who lived here? Hunters? Nah, they hunt for the shiny things, so they would not leave them here. Maybe robbers, brittle bones who crush and steal from other brittle bones. Ah, I've just realized that is hilarious. I've just realized that Brittle Bones is the name for humans and elves and various other races that the trolls use. That is hilarious. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's open this up. No! No touching! Fat troll hands don't touch Zippet's gold! No! Mugwise, no cause for worry. Just a tiny spirit greenskin. It is harmless. Harmless? Zip it will show the fat brutes harmless. You see these bones, yes? They were two adventurers who starved to death because Zip it kept the magic walls up for a hundred years. The moon can care not about the shiny things, but they need something with hex power. Hex what? Magic. Oh, you mean an artifact, yes? Fine. Zippet doesn't want to stay here for a hundred years, no. So here's his deal. Zippet gives you one of his artifacts, and the fat brutes hand back his gold. Everybody happy, yes? <sighs> Fine. They have a pact. Yes, yes! Now give Zippet the gold! Not entirely sure what a uh, ghostly green skin wants with 5,000 gold, but okay. I don't think the trolls really care about gold that much. However, other races certainly do, and it would probably make a lot of sense. But anyway, as you can see right here, this has a 5,000 gold value, and we're going to be buying it with all our cash, which is technically what we just took from the chest here anyway, so we're not really losing anything. Oh, beautifuls! Come back to zip it! Yes! And gone. Grungwar, spirits are just like bone people, no? Restless souls and all. It is true. His soul was not at peace, so his god took him into the moonlit river and... Just get out of him, okay? This place gives me creeps. Agrog, is he all right? <sighs> It is just... he has been hearing things again. The gift of spirits. 
It is true, but this is the second time in a day. Before that, Akrog had not heard a spirit in moons. Maybe the cradle makes Akrog's gift stronger? Grungwa thinks not. His own gifts are still the same. It must be something else in this jungle, or just chance. Hmm. Well, now is not the time to think. Let them try this key, so they can bring the artifact back to Zeramak. What now? What is this? Alright, well, at least we survived the encounter with the green skin ghost, and now we will be able to loot the artifact. There, the artifact. Chieftain, let them go back to the tribe camp. This should be enough for Zaramat to shape the tooth. Alright, so technically what we can do now is we can head back to the camp. However, what I would like to do is explore the remaining small sections of the cave that we haven't yet explored. And there is something down here. I assume it's just an exit point. Yeah, it seems like an exit point. There's the godstone as well. So technically what we can do is we can literally just interact with the godstone and then teleport back. But I'd like to make sure that I'm not missing out on anything in here because items are pretty strong and quite useful in this game. So I would love to be able to maximize that. This is a hard enemy, by the way. This is a mutated cave spawn right here. This is going to be very difficult for us. Gonna try and use Throne Weapon. Boom, deadly Throne Weapon. Did not much damage at all, but that's okay. That is perfectly fine. As long as Akrog can basically tank this, that is all we really need to do. As you can see, however, the enemy has an ability to afflict decaying on us, which is reducing our resistance to melee and ranged and all that other stuff quite significantly. However, Akrog is such an absolute monster that he is taking, well, basically zero damage. So I'm pretty happy with that. We're going to use a totem here just to make sure that we can top him up a little bit with the healing. Definitely recommend if you're going to play to take Grungwa or Azaska, either one, as the healing unit. Because this totem right here, super powerful. At least I think it's, it's very, very strong and definitely helps to keep your guys alive. So anyway, let's move over here and see what this is. Bone dust. Ground bone from a bone man or some other creature. It matters not. Grungwa can use this to keep his totem plant healthy right and we also have ah there we are loop of resistance this is fantastic okay so this is a ring any troll wearing this will be harder to hurt in battle it also sells for a pretty significant amount too so if you you know if we wanted to we could sell it i'm gonna just equip this on mr akrog because he's going to be the one taking most of the damage i suppose and otherwise we are now going to head back. I don't think there are any other places in this area that we'll be able to interact with. So let's go into here. We're going to just connect these two godstones together and then port. Boom. And then we're back at the entrance. Pretty fantastic, right? Yeah, I love this system, actually. I feel like the system is extremely well done and does give you just that whole whole better feel of quality of life. And it just makes it so much quicker to get back. little blood. Then bring this to Zeramak. They must complete the devouring before sundown. It will all work out. Grangwa feels it. Magwa smiles upon them. <laughs> Wonderful. Then what could go wrong? <sighs> Why, Zaska? Why must he always blaspheme? Zaska knows how difficult his role in the tribe is once he everyone to shun him wait zaska's jokes are why they like him not he always thought they were just jealous of his pretty face zaska is avoiding the question no zaska is just not in the mood for being questioned by an old ailing troll fine if zaska wants to stay an outcast among kin then so be it. Just say not that Gramwa tried not to help him. Sure. Pure, holy elder Gramwa Oldfur only wanted to help. Ooh, a lot of drama going on here. Okay, so we can say all kinds of things. I actually don't know how this is going to affect stuff, but, well, let's have a look. So, Zaska should not disrespect Grungwa. What is wrong with Zaska? Grungwa is not Zaska's enemy. Or, to Grungwa, the kin disrespecting Zaska has nothing to do with his blaspheming. Right. 
Uh, well, I, I, I think the Grungwa is genuinely trying to maybe help him? I, I think so. So I'm going to say three. Grungwa is not trusted one Zazka's enemy, and he should know that. It is true that many kin treat him badly, but Grungwar has always been there for him. Hmm, sure. Hmm, I'm gonna say Zazka should not disrespect Grungwar. Zazka can blaspheme all he likes, but he should not disrespect Grungwar. He must apologize now. Leave it, Chieftain. Nothing he has said is untrue. Grangwa is old, and Grangwa is ailing. Either way, let them move on. Hmm, alright. I wonder whether that does anything to our relation with them or anything like that. I'm not entirely sure. There is a red marker down here as well. It seems like there's a spider that we can potentially kill. Alright, let's do that for a little bit of extra experience then potentially. Oh, there's a whole bunch. Okay, we might want to be a bit careful here then. Oh, they're getting smashed. Look at that. Akrog does so much damage. Oh, even as a tank spec, he's doing a lot of damage right there. Okay, so they're going to drop a whole bunch of extra resources as well. And then we're going to return to the camp and see what our quest completions have done. So let's have a look. Ask Crum about Noag's whereabouts. That's probably what we want to do then, right now. There. How feels he now? Better. Speak true, Crum. Warrior Higrak. He... He die. Uh. The brittle bone stab stick missed the heart. In a few sundowns, he will walk again. Good. That. Good. Ah. Elder Grongwar, chosen chieftain Akrog, hunters Aska, Mogwa, praise. Crum is glad to see they are back safely. Mogwa praise, Shepherd Crum, kind soul. How are the wounded? Not well. Nagak and Tap will not live to see the next sundown. Higrak might mend, or he might not. Might not, but Crum told him he would be fine. Sometimes a bit of hope and trust is enough to heal the worst of wounds. What of the devouring? Is it ready? Almost. The Bonekin need a few more things. Would Crum know where Little Blood is? Akrog went to his shelter, but he was not there. Strange. No, Crum has seen him not. But he was very upset about their sire the whole day. Poor Noag. He still thought Ken lived forever. Akrog will see if he can comfort him. He should. Though this would have happened one day. Kin dies, and there is nothing a troll can do. It is a painful lesson they all must learn. And even though a troll should treat every moonkin as kin, it is no secret that the death of a trusted one or same blood can hurt more. Mm. Either way, they need to find Little Blood. Has Krom any idea where he went? No, but he is sure he went not far. They should look in the jungle. All right. Sharp tusks and thick hide, Crom. All right, so here we go. Brittle bone artifact filled with the hex power they need to create the tooth once used by brittle bones to cut up potatoes. Oh yes. <laughs> All right, so let's dismantle it. Boom, and then we get the ritual tooth, which we can now craft. Ah, Zaramak, old hide, he have it still. Here, chieftain, Mugwa's tooth. Mm. Akrog thanks, Zeramak. To Kabrax, then. Oh, and Zeramak scrappers can search the cave now. It is safe. All right, fantastic. Okay, so I am extremely intrigued as to find out what is going to happen with this clan of trolls. And if you would also like to find out, then uh, please give the video a like. I would very much appreciate it. If you would also like to check out the game, there is a link in the description and uh well i am very much looking forward to playing more of this and i i really want to jump into the skirmish mode as well I really want to play some multiplayer too and you can even play this all in co-op as well it's just it's so crazy anyway i thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time